Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. We got the truck all warmed up in there. It's time to hop in and head north. Let's go to the tent. Well, it's 52 degrees here. My phone says it's about 50 at the tent. Temperatures are supposed to drop all day long today. Get down to about 22 tonight. Uh, it's supposed to be windy today. Tomorrow's high, I believe, is about 30 degrees only. So it's gonna be kind of a raw weekend. Today is Friday. My dad should be up to the folks cabin about noon. Uh, tomorrow morning, Zachary's driving up to the tent. Yeah, I'm sure he'll be there before noon. If you guys watch his channel called Zach Jensen, you saw that he put together a new deer stand. We're gonna set that up. I wanna get that ground blind where I did the clearing, uh, you know, cleared stuff out for it last weekend. I wanna get that set up today. And my dad's uh, the guy that hunts up there at his cabin with uh, during deer hunting. His name is Wayne. He's coming up this weekend to help with deer stands. Just getting everything ready for deer hunting. in here and fill up with diesel and I have to go up to the store and get some food for the weekend and we'll head north Well, it looks exactly the same since I only left uh, less than a week ago. It's definitely colder in here than it is outside. Well, it feels colder than 50 degrees in here. <laughs> I think I'll get the wood stove going. It's going to be dropping today, so I might as well get it warmed up nice and early. Well, I just had to do some work calls and something is up with my truck with the brakes when I was coming up here. It kind of started screwing up when on my way up to Cloquet yesterday and I didn't think much of it. And I don't know, it's just kind of weird. So anyway, I just set up an appointment in Cloquet to drop it off on Sunday and then I'll probably take Melissa's truck back to the house so that I can uh, get to work on Monday morning. But I just took care of that. I do want to go out before lunch here. It's about 10, almost 10.25 and set up that ground blind because I would really rather do that when it's halfway warm outside, which it is right now. And then tomorrow when it's cold, we can worry about setting up Zachary's. I've used these kind of ground blinds before and they're cheap, they're only like 40 bucks. If you, especially if you wait till they go on sale like at the end of the season, so that's when I'll buy them. And this one has just sat in a box for a couple of years and I just haven't had to use it.
that's all set up now. We'll come back out here and check it again tomorrow. When Zachary is here, but at least it's set up, I have to put a chair in there. And I might build something so that you can rest your gun on it. I hate shooting freehand. Now I'm walking back towards my far stand. Not, nothing will matter with that stand I just set up, that ground blind. If there's scrapes and stuff back here. In two weeks. I fixed the umbrella roof on this one so it's all ready to go. This is still an awesome stand. I just haven't seen deer back here the last couple years. Shot plenty of deer back here. I think I'll walk over there to that one spot. We were over there last weekend when I was up. Just see if there's any deer scrape there yet. I have not seen any scrape or rub anywhere. No scrape under this one yet. You can see right here where the deer trail is. Usually they've got one underneath this one too. I was listening to a radio program and uh, it was an outdoor program. And they said that there just is nowhere yet where the deer are, are in the rut yet, so I guess we're just waiting. I'll head back to the tent. It'll be just about lunchtime then. Those tamarack trees are starting to lose their needles, but they sure are pretty before they go bare. Well, that temperature certainly isn't dropping very fast out there at all. West of today, decreasing clouds. Highs in the lower to mid 50s. Northwest wind 5 to 15 miles per hour. Gusts up to 25 miles per hour, increasing to 35 miles per hour in the afternoon. Tonight, mostly cloudy. A chance of rain showers, possibly mixed with snow showers in the evening, then a chance of snow showers after midnight. Lows in the mid to upper 20s. Northwest wind 10 to 20 miles per hour. Gusts up to 40 miles per hour decreasing to 30 miles per hour after midnight. I brought one of these roasts like this. It was uh, it was in the on sale bin at the Super One, so I got that for tomorrow for lunch. I'll keep the leftovers for at home. A couple of pork steaks from Zach and I to cook up tomorrow night. I got a little a chuck eye steak for me tonight. For lunch today, I. Uh, Last night and I was with Melissa at the new house and we made a pork roast on the rotisserie. Somebody even commented when I posted that on Facebook that I'd use this for leftovers at the tent and I said, no, I don't think so, and something like that. Anyway, here I am. Uh, this is a good idea for lunch today. It kind of was like, huh, that's a good idea. So I'm gonna have some of this and uh, some corn. I don't think I can keep doing Twister. I'm going to have to pull that one out. I wasn't getting into it last time when I was up here.
if, if there's everything is all done, it'll be, 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 be about June before they kill off again. But they want to, to, to... Well, my dad was just over here for a little over an hour, and now it's about five after two, and I'm going to meet him out at his deer stand at that area uh, in ten minutes, so we got to take off right now. No, but this is where they were going. Yeah. yeah. A couple more years, we'll be done. <laughs> My dad's friend Wayne is up here. He deer hunts with them, so we're just checking this out so we can move my dad's stand. Because right where I'm standing is where I shot that deer last year. This is the stand here we're going to move. No matter where you put it out here, it's cold. there and undo that strap without getting pushed over. And then we're going to move it over to that other area. The pine trees they planted in this clearing after they cleared it, they're really getting pretty big. Well, those two are going to go out to the tripod stand and see how that one looks. That's the one that Wayne sits in. It was hard to even film out there. It was so windy. I mean, it's really blowing out there. Well, I've got some of these birch trees that are dying. They start dying at the top and eventually they completely die. This one here dropped a whole top. This isn't the first time it's dropped stuff on the yard. And you can see that, I mean, it still had sun leaves on it last year, but that whole top is gone. And by next year, this one will probably be completely dead. I've got a few more like this. This one right here is totally dead. The one behind it is totally dead. These two right here keep dropping stuff, and you can see the tops of those are gone. So, I mean, these just have to come down. The problem is dropping them so they don't hit anything like the fire pit or the tent or whatever. So I'm going to see if I can drop a couple of them today and just see how it goes. I'd say that one went pretty well. There'll be a lot of good firewood in that tree.
that didn't go too bad. I was kind of aiming towards that tree. I thought it would hit just to the left of it. That was a dead one. That was the next one I had to cut down anyway. So that worked out pretty good. Didn't hit the dock over there. The reason why we want to cut it down right now, I mean, next year this one would have been totally dead, but you can see on the top how it just rots away and you don't get any good firewood out of that. This one here was already starting to get a little bit funky even on the bottom. I mean, this is still really good firewood. But when you get to the middle of the tree, you can see right here where that's getting soft. It's not hard like the center. And you can see here, once we get to the top, I mean, this is all rotted. This is not good firewood at all. This will just get tossed. I mean, look, I can push my finger right in there. I always like those two birch trees right there, though, but they've been dying off for about five years. I knew they had to come down eventually, but for right now, it kind of makes the tent look naked. I had my dad and Wayne come over here and help push to put that one down. That one was kind of leaning towards the fire pit. I did not want that one to come down and wipe everything out here. Then we put the rack on the four-wheeler and then we'll put a ladder on that tomorrow and bring out an extension ladder to take down my dad's stand and move it. Well, I'm feeling pretty confident. I can drop this tree right here and not hit the fire pit. I'm going to get these last two cut up into logs. Those guys were going to start um, hauling some of these logs over to where I split it, but then they decided it was happy hour and they'll come back and do it in the morning.
What a day. Well, I think I'm going to uh, go grab that, the, oh, the game camera or whatever that, uh, that sits on the, uh, the front of the tent there. I already pulled the one, and that one uh, didn't have anything on it. It's only been not even a week, so I think I'll pull the other one before it gets dark. And then, uh, I don't know, I suppose i got to start the barbecue pretty soon also. Well, nothing really on this one either. I mean, I'm cutting trees now, so... <laughs> just got done talking to Melissa for about 45 minutes on her ride home. Now it's dark outside. I gotta get that barbecue going. It still isn't all that chilly outside. It feels chilly with that wind. You don't see the wind uh, off the dock. It's not nearly as, as strong right there as it is coming over the top of the trees. thought that was just one steak. Oh, I took a shower before I come up here this morning, but uh, I just feel grimy from all that cutting wood and whatever, so I'm going to take a shower tonight. This fan right here, it's just a four inch fan that's inside of like a, like a stove pipe, but more for a vent, like a vent pipe. And uh, it just blows the warm air from out there into the shower area.
all the steaks are done, but the potato needs a little more time. So I think I'm gonna jump in the shower and then we'll pull that potato off. For the last hour I was filling out the journal, I had a lot to write about today, and the temperature now is down to 39. The wind is still blowing out there, but it's not gusting quite as hard. But we can change. You know that now. Please. Okay, everyone, well, it's 10.45, and I'm going to bed, and I will see you guys in the morning. Good morning, everybody. It's 10 minutes after 5 right now, but all the power is out, so no need to worry. It'll be light soon enough. The power popped back on about 5.35, and right now it's about 6.24. Just waiting for it to get light outside. I was just out on the front porch because it looked like it was snowing, and it got super windy. It was kind of a scary windy, and uh, now the temperature has dropped another 3 degrees. Today, partly sunny. Isolated snow showers in the morning. Highs in the lower to mid-30s. Northwest wind 15 to 20 miles per hour with gusts to around 40 miles per hour. Chance of snow 20%. Tonight, partly cloudy. Lows in the 20s. Northwest wind 5 to 15 miles per hour. That wind is raw out here compared to yesterday. The wind just gusted out there and something fell on top of the tent roof. It sounded like a, I don't know, branches or something. I thought cutting all those trees down yesterday would eliminate that problem. Looks like it's just some smaller pine tree branches that have come off the tree. You can see a few little ones up there. What a nasty morning. I can hear people once in a while shooting too out duck hunting. Um, that'd be a raw morning in a duck blind. Zachary just texted me, just leaving the house now, that'll put him up here between 11.30 and 12. I just started my truck so it can warm up. I think I'm going to run down to that ground blind. If it survived the wind from uh, this morning, it'll be fine for all of deer hunting.
I think maybe when I get back I'll start hauling this wood over to where I split it. All the logs are picked up now and brought over to the splitting area. Couldn't bring the camera out there and film it because the wind just blows everything right over. That's a nice little stack of wood that needs to be split. Well, it's about seven minutes after 10. I call, I go, I texted Melissa and she said to put that roast on an hour and a half before, so I'll put that on at about 10.30. Come on, Ann. Do you guys pull that wood right before my battery? No, I know, we can pull it off, you know, so that we can, but... Uh, no, but if it's all... <laughs> I'll take the four wheel and put the ladder on it. Oh, I see. Yeah, no, we can do that. Yeah, that's fine. Because yeah. I don't have to split my mind. I put... I'm going to get this roast put in there. I'm going to put some beef broth in there. Said to add about four teaspoons of this Tony's brown gravy mix into some cold water. I'm just going to put it into some broth. I don't know, that looks like about the right amount. Put a little Johnny's in there. She said to add bay leaves, but I don't have any bay leaves up here. cook for an hour and then I'll add the potatoes and carrots and give it another half hour and lunch should be done. It really smells good in here right now. 
the sun will come out and then all of a sudden it'll be heavy snow flurries. It's snow flurrying right now. one and within one day it was cracked. Really? So yeah. I got one more at home and I'm gonna or I think I threw it in here. I'm gonna put it on here and then after that I'm gonna go back to the clear ones. I actually can't wait to get rid of my Android and get an iPhone again. Really? Yep, I just don't like these at all. Huh. I like having my one button on the bottom that runs everything, you know, okay. and it comes up and stuff. So Yeah I um I got the glass one too but I haven't cracked it like that. First day. Yeah. <laughs> The back of my phone got cracked, and I don't know how that. My phone gets yeah. hot. So I then put the potatoes and carrots in the last half hour, she said. So I told my dad, we'll just wait until you get here. And then I just texted him a little bit ago and said, look, we're not going to be ready to go until 1230. I'd say that's done. You ready for some lunch? Yeah. That smells good. Wow, looks like it is done all the way through. Oh, it is a little red, so that's good. That's how I wanted it anyway. You need another knife, like a steak knife or something? Um, yeah. Here's one. Do you need a fork? What's that? You need a fork. I'll need one, yeah. These are the worst plastic forks ever. <laughs> it's really good. Not bad. Well, that roast was absolutely delicious. Now we're all going out to meet out at my dad's stand to move his, and it's going to be brutal out there with that wind, so a few layers are needed. Zachary, he's going to drive the four-wheeler there. That's going to be brutally cold. For the four wheeler ride? Yeah. Do you have any gloves? Yeah, I got some gloves. Okay. Zachary's truck after driving up here, that's all ice. Oh, you got yours looking pretty good, huh? That should be nice.
Nope, I'm fine. Well, at least we got my dad's stand down. Now we're moving it over to another spot here in the clearing. <laughs> yeah. So we want to drive that back to the folks' cabin and then grab your stuff and let's go out and do yours? Yeah. Okay. Everything's in the trunks. Okay. Sounds good. Stump. to go. Now we'll go set up Zachary's and we'll pretty much be ready for deer hunting. Well now we're heading out to where Zachary's stand is gonna go. We went back and got his truck and him and I will go out and find a spot to put it. So we think we found the most ultimate spot ever. We're gonna put a deer stand up on that hill. And right here, this is a, it's like a fire escape route for if there was a forest fire that comes through here. 
and there's also one that comes here which is it's all swamp behind that and this is the way we came in so we come off the road we come down this trail we're gonna come in here it's gonna go back up there on that hill and he'll be able to cover it's a big ravine on the other side be able to cover both these trails because deer like to move in the least you know resistance when they're not pushed so this might be a real good area <laughs> Well, you can easy shoot to your left. You can't easy shoot to your right. Uh, See what I mean? Because right now you're facing just like this. And you can easily see what's there. Because that trail is over there. So I don't think that's too bad. I mean, we can move it if you want to, but I would think that you want to be able to see over here because it's going to be hard to shoot. Yeah. I'd say that looks be pretty good, huh? Yeah. Any deer come from that trail or you're not gonna see them coming down the other trail until they're right here, but they gotta do something. So Yeah, that's a good spot. Now that the stands are done, uh, we're gonna go up here and turn around and go back. And then we're gonna walk out towards Sarah's stand. When Wayne and my dad were out at the tripod stand yesterday, there was a big scrape and uh, some rub on some branches and stuff, some brush. So I wanna go out to the one spot between the clearings by Sarah's where there usually is a scrape there, just to check it out and see. No scrape yet. That's the spot where they usually have one, right underneath this tree. We're going back here trying to find uh, Sarah's old stand where she shot that. I don't know what year that was that she shot a deer there. There it is, it's still standing. That one has a nice point in it. That's a tiny stand though, it's uncomfortable. Well, it's hard to get into it, I should say. It's got a bad uh, ladder. I think it's grown into the tree. Oh, I had an umbrella, too. Well, it's 5 o'clock at night. I've been going steady all day since the polka music this morning. Now it's time to head back to the tent. I'm going to grab my chainsaw and Zach and I are going to go over to the folks' cabin. And there's one tree that kind of leans towards this cabin, so 
Now those three are going to push on it and I'm going to cut it so and just drop it. So anyway, I'll be back in a little bit. Well, we went over there ended up cutting up two trees and now we're back here and it's not dark yet so we're going to shoot the deer rifles and just make sure that they're fairly close. Zachary has assumed the hunting position. <laughs> <laughs> I see the birch bark go flying out the side. Did you? <laughs> Hold on. So now I'm doing the bottom plate with the other other uh, circle, right? Yep, bottom plate, other circle. All right. That'll be the right side. I like this one because it's got the 12 power scope, so you can get right on top of it, you know? Oh, yeah. Which hole am I going for? On the right side? Right, right side. Okay. Just to the right of it. Right. Right. Same exact distance on the right. Your holes are like this far apart, top and bottom, but they're same exact spot. How far to the right? Uh, an inch. I think that one's in the bullseye. Okay, that's close enough. Alrighty. Zachary, like usual, is shooting the Winchester Featherweight 30 odd 6. I'm shooting the Mossberg Patriot 30 odd 6. And Sarah shoots the Ruger M77 in a 243. I shot the Mossberg and the Ruger. Uh, two shots were a little bit to the right. One was in the bullseye on both of them. So for me, that's close enough. Zachary's, all of his were a little bit, I don't, uh, I can't remember what it was. Anyway, we're going to do a little bit of adjustment and let him shoot that again. Zachary is out there putting up another uh, plate. It's wet out there. I don't have any rubber boots. and He had rubber boots, but one of them kept dry and the other one failed. I think it'll be good. Okay, how do they do? Well, it's a, like to the right by just a tiny bit still. And then one was down and one was up. But the distance to the right is the same, which means... And you're going to go another couple clicks, you can. Or you can leave it, it's up to you. I'll move it. Uh, um, let's see. How I would go... Uh, how close did it get? It's like a half one inch. I would go maybe two clicks because we don't know how many clicks you went that first time, you know, so. I just got it 
And that should go a half inch at that because that's close to 100 yards there. shoot twice. Okay. I haven't shot this gun in a while. <laughs> Which hole did you shoot at? The center. Okay, the center one. Everything to me is blurry so it's hard to see it. Bottom left one. I don't even see a hole, so you're probably right in there. Uh, I thought I was down. I'm gonna go for the top right one. Okay. That's super close to the... Is it? Okay. I think you're good enough. Yeah. I mean, if you can hit the plate, you would have got the deer. Yeah. So. All the rifles are sighted in now. It's 28 degrees. Started up the charcoal. We're going to cook up a couple of smaller pork steaks. Of course, a couple of baked potatoes and a vegetable. I already have a couple of potatoes out there baking. Put a little Johnny's on here. Oh, those are just about perfect. A little more time. Have a problem with that big nozzle thing you were talking about. 
Okay, everyone. Well, I've just been filling out the journal. Zachary is out talking to Samantha on the phone. It's uh, almost 10 to 10, and pretty soon we'll be going to bed. I'm pretty sure that tomorrow morning by about 10, we'll have everything packed up and cleaned up and ready to head south. I will see you guys in the morning. Good morning, everybody. It's a few minutes after 7 o'clock in the morning right now. I've been up for a while, but I was just waiting for Zachary to get up, and he's up now too. It's 26 degrees out, but right now the wind has died down. Mainly this morning we'll just be picking stuff up to head home, but uh, it's nice to have everything done and ready for deer hunting. Okay guys, well thanks a lot for watching. Next time we'll be up here, which is going to be in what, 12 or 13 days? It'll be time for deer hunting 2018. on the next video.